All righty, it is time for the one and only Rush. Chuck Carfine in for David Kaplan. I don't know what David Kaplan's doing. I hear he's got a new show called Unfiltered. Watch it on NBC Sports Chicago. It's on at 6 o'clock. But we have some time to talk. Whatever you guys want to talk about. Tim Stebbins is with me. How you doing, Tim? Good. Yeah, I've also uh, I've also heard Mr. Catman has his own show. It's uh, looking good so far. Yeah, I, I was concerned because he's never done anything in media before. <laughs> so I was wondering, can David Kaplan host a show? And uh, so I tuned in uh, with some grave concerns for his well-being and his uh, his career. And then I realized, boy, actually, David Kaplan can host a show. He's pretty good at it. Actually, <laughs> no, uh, it's great. Uh, definitely check it out. They got awesome guests all the time, six to six thirty. It's going to lead right into a lot of our pre and post game shows, uh, or actually pre game shows with the White Sox, and the season is about to begin. So before uh, we talk baseball, let's say hello to everybody. We got Greg from Moline. We got Chris from New Lenox. Randy says, "Go Cubs, go!" Anthony from Rogers Park. Willie from well, he just says Chicago Cubs. So that's just, he's from Wrigley, I guess. Uh, Randy says cap rocks. Uh, Tim, does he rock? Yeah, he rocks. Yeah. Yeah, he definitely rocks. So uh, a lot of people watching right now. So, uh, Hey everybody, thank you uh, for tuning in. Uh, how excited are you for baseball, Tim? Uh, honestly, I'm, it feels surreal. I, it, it's almost like the anticipation you would get in a normal off season. We didn't get because of this lockout. So, uh, I think my excitement honestly might follow, after opening day and that feels weird because usually it's before because a month ago it seemed like there might not be an opening day anytime soon and here we are yeah i was uh, entering the depths of a baseball depression about a month ago i mean literally like a month ago we were like wondering is there going to be baseball and then boom we get baseball we got spring training and here we are uh so oh we got uh declan from ireland buddy from des moines alfred's from chicago but he lives in atlanta my sister lives in Atlanta, by the way. So if you see her, say hello. Uh, Wayne from uh, Birchwood, Wisconsin. All right. So uh, let's talk about the Sox first, then we'll get to the Cubs. Um, with the Sox, last year was decimated. The team was like decimated with injuries. How about this, Tim? This is going to shock you. Okay. Ready for this? Let's do it. Uh, Jose Abreu scored the most. I shouldn't say scored the most. Played the most games of any position player last year. I think it was like 157. Yoan Mankata was second with like 140. Who do you think uh, played the third most games for the White Sox last year? I'm putting you on the spot, and I'm doing this because you really can't lose here because there's no way you should come up with this name. Well, I, I feel like I've looked into this. There was only a select number of guys that played 100-plus games. I remember that. I'm, I'm going to throw Leary Gar Le Garcia out there as my guy. All right, so that's a great guess. He's fourth. Oh. So here's the third. Here's the third. Andrew Vaughn. Wow. So we're talking about a team that last year had Larry Garcia play the fourth most games. Andrew Vaughn's played the third most, and they won 93 games. Yeah. Despite that. So you're hoping this year is not going to be decimated with injuries like last year. And now we have Lance Lynn out for eight weeks. We got Garrett Crochet out for the season. So are you concerned that this could be a repeat of last year with injuries, which are completely out of their control? I'd like to say. Yeah, it's interesting because on the one hand, I think the the pitching injuries are concerning, especially with this abbreviated ramp up in the four mm -hmm. weeks of spring training. You know, you knew going in Michael Kopech would be probably on a innings limit for the whole season. And he's only made two starts, obviously. So I think in that sense, Lance Lynn hurts, never mind a guy in crochet who can give multiple innings, but I think on the other side of this, from an optim an optimist standpoint, is like you said, they they won the AL Central last year despite Eloy Jimenez and Luis Robert both missing significant extended stretches. So I think you can't, you know, the, the pitching the pitching injuries matter, and those could be huge. But I think with the offense, if those guys are back healthy and you are getting them for this full season, you know, maybe there's bumps and bruises here, rest built in, obviously, but. That I don't want to say they even out, but that should help them at least be the team that we think they are and weather some of those injuries, especially the Lynn one for the early going here. Well, we have the answer to their problems. It's Johnny Cueto. The White Sox <laughs> have signed Johnny Cueto. He's going to start in the minor leagues, and then you hope and assume he'll be good enough to be called up. That's kind of like the way I look at it right now is it's almost a tryout. 
It's not like, hey, he's coming here. He's the answer until Lynn gets back. Let's see what he's got. I'm assuming he'll be fine and he'll get called up. But I think the White Sox, from the looks of it, I don't have the contract in front of me. But from what I read, there's nothing really guaranteed until he like starts playing in the major leagues. So uh, for Sox fans who are thinking, well, this is the answer to the rotation, Johnny Cueto. Well, I think if they have more issues down the road with the rotation, they're going to address them. Uh, Greg says nothing to worry about the White Sox. They're in a weak division and have a strong lineup. It's a, I'll say it's a weak division getting stronger. What do you think about the moves that the AL Central made in the offseason? Yeah, I mean, Minnesota last year, we knew that that was a weird year. They they underperformed greatly. I think they had a horrible start, right? But, I mean, Correa, Sonny Gray, those are good additions. You lose some pieces um, in, in those also, like Josh Donaldson, they got they, they traded. Nelson Cruz isn't there anymore to, you know, hurt White Sox fans, I guess. To crush um, my soul. Is that what you're saying? Yes. yes. <laughs> That's a good way of saying it. Yeah. Um, I like Detroit a lot, and I don't know if this is – Detroit's year because they're so young, but I think that team is on the rise. And I yeah. think maybe probably next year, they're a team that could give the white Sox, you know, some, some trouble, but I still think the white Sox are really good as constructed, especially this year. And I think that's going to be a, a great two team race for a while in the years to come with the, with the way Detroit's coming up, but it might be a year Detroit makes that step, but not the full step to the playoffs. All right. Well, Tim, you cover the Cubs. And by the way, we're going to get to our predictions about wins for the White Sox and the Cubs at the end of this. But in the meantime, uh, give Cubs fans hope. Give them a reason to watch. And is the only reason to watch Suzuki? There's a lot of reasons to watch. Okay, good, um, good, good, good. Okay. <laughs> no, I, I think I think we know where, where the Cubs are right now. They're in this kind of transition period. It's a, all those guys that were the familiar faces are gone. But... I think there's potential here. I think they could be better than maybe some want to give credit for. Am I predicting that they're going to win 90 games, make the playoffs? No, I, I wouldn't say that. But um, I think you you might see in some circles mid to low 70s. And I think they, they could be better than that. And that that depends on what happens come July, right? If, if you're out of the race, they have a lot of veteran pitchers that teams would want and teams would come calling for, especially this season. But there's there's room here for some surprising maybe. And that's with a couple of factors like what does Clint Frazier do now, now that he's healthy? I think he's a breakout candidate with his concussion battles behind him. Um, Nick Madrigal, familiar, familiar name for the White Sox and White Sox fans. We know the first two years he, he battled injuries too, but if he's healthy, I think that's a guy who can hit 300 every year. Nico Horner, another uh, key player, if he's healthy and he's on the field. And then, like you said, Suzuki, they have Marcus Stroman. Yeah. Um, I think pitching is their biggest question, uh, especially when, a lot of these guys aren't ramped up yet, but I think there's some there's chances they could surprise if these guys perform uh, kind of break through this year, I guess. Yeah, there's a lot of um, a lot of things have to go right for that to happen, but that can happen. I hear what you're saying. Um, Marcus Stroman is a, a guy who has the chance to be incredible with the whites uh, with the cubs but do you feel like if the season goes south at the trade deadline when teams are like okay we need starting pitching they're going to call the cubs and be like hey uh we're interested in marcus stroman yeah he's he's it's a really interesting contract right because he has uh an opt-out after next year i i think i think if you're the cubs and you know theo epstein used to always say there's no such thing as untouchables i I don't know if Jed Hoyer maybe adheres to that necessarily. They're obviously different, different men. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, if the Cubs, if that was the case and the Cubs got absolutely blown out of the water with an offer, I, I think they'd have to listen. But I also think you keep that guy, you bring him here for a reason. And if next year you see development this year with a lot of these players and prospect growth, potentially that guy's going to be really valuable for you here uh, come 2023. And, and it's still a three-year deal technically if he doesn't right. opt out. Um, I wouldn't trade them, but I think you can never say never, depending on how desperate teams might be for pitching and what might be out there. All right. We got uh, Kenta who, who's in England, loves the White Sox. I hope you listen to the White Sox talk podcast, by the way, we have a new one dropping tomorrow. Our season predictions, by the way, uh, Rob says Aloy and cease for Quintana and the Cubs got the better deal. I don't know what that means. Does that make <laughs> any sense to you? I don't think so. I don't know. David Kaplan would disagree. I think. 
Yeah. Uh, okay, let's get to our um, over-unders for the season with the Cubs and the Sox. Actually, I think I saw what the number was for the White Sox. Uh, the projected wins by points bet for the season. Cubs are at 75 and a half. White Sox, 91 and a half. Are you taking the over or the under with the Cubs, 75 and a half, Tim? And everyone who's watching, what do you think? Over, under for 75 and a half with the Cubs. And we'll get to the White Sox. Yeah, you mentioned on the, the White Sox Talk podcast, your season previews coming. Uh, we did one with Cubs, Gordon Whitmire, David Kaplan, and I. And this was a, a heated debate we had between the three of us. And uh, I think I fell in the middle of capping Gordon. And I tried to be the voice of reason, as I think Gordon put it. I put over. And I think that's speaking to what I just laid out, how there's room for them because of some of those, some people might not have the highest expectations. I think there's room to surprise, but I don't know how far over I would go with that because of the possibility you trade some of these guys. I think it's yeah. real. I, I think if they're under 500 in third place come July, they have a lot of veteran relievers that they signed to one year deals. Wade Miley, Drew Smiley, or veterans that are starting pitchers like maybe maybe by trading them you give opportunities to some of their pitching young pitchers especially um in triple a caleb killian's a guy they got for chris bryan that could be called up and then that maybe those guys perform well and bump the win total up but um if they're i think that 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 trade deadline i don't think it's gonna be a mass sell-off if there were to be one but i think that looms in the back of my mind where i'd be hesitant to go too far over that that yeah, that makes, I, I hear what you're saying because that they could have an okay first half. They they make some trades, and then all of a sudden, you know, I don't want to say they're tanking, but their record's going to tank, and then it's tough for them to reach that win total that you're hoping for. Uh, Jerry says Cubs over. Uh, I'm trying to get all the Cubs stuff in here, not the Sox. Uh, Donald says Cubs slightly over. Um, and there's some really funny comments about me that I'm just not going to say. Uh, <laughs> we've got some funny. Actually, there's a Sox fan who said, "I've got 32 wins for the Cubs." So that's that sounds like we got that sounds like a real White Sox fan there. Uh, so for the White Sox, their over unders. Oh, and by the way, I'll, for me, I'll go. Um, I'll go over. I will be an optimistic observer. <laughs> Of the Cubs and say they'll go over, but not by much. They're not winning like 83. Uh, all right. So White Sox, they're nine, one and a half. Last year, they won 93 with all the injuries that they suffered. The division is going to be tougher, but I think this team, I know they lost Lance Lynn for eight weeks, but I think this team has the chance to be better. How much better? Well, we're going to find out in the postseason, but uh, postseason, but in terms of the regular season, I think they can win 93 games or more again. So I'm taking the over. Now we've got Rob who says 97 wins for the White Sox. Uh, Jerry says Sox are over. Uh, this one guy says exit in the first round. How dare you say that about the White Sox? No, I'm kidding. Uh, Tim, what do you think? 91 and a half over or under with the White Sox? Yeah, I would take over there. I would definitely take the over. And I, here's my one. I'll try to sound like an expert, I guess. Like every team sure. is going to have pitching concerns. Um, especially in the first early few weeks, month, month and a half, what have you. I think the White Sox lineup is able to take advantage of that then. I think if you're having pe – the, the rosters are expanded to 28 in, in April through May 1st, I believe. You're going to have a lot of extra bullpen arms that teams mm -hmm. are going to need to count on. I think the White Sox can punish teams. I think that lineup top down is scary. And A.J. Pollock joining it only makes it deeper. Andrew Vaughn, it, you know, he's, he's already – he obviously came back from the hit pointer and got and some he'll be betting like ninth or eighth it, in this lineup. It reminds me a lot of the 2016 Cubs. And I don't like when people compare these two things as similar. So you're doing that. I'm going to do that. And I think it's just the, <laughs> the, the length and where do you get guys out? It's like, I look at mm -hmm. like a, for a current example, I guess I look at the Phillies lineup. Where did, where, mm -hmm. where do you get out? I think that's yeah. what the White Sox have. And uh, with, Maybe starters going two, three, four, five innings, what have you, depending on a given day. You get into that bullpen, man, and that that lineup really, really can uh, take advantage. I think. Yeah, and I love that it's looking like they're going to have uh, Tony Luis is going to have Luis Robert batting second. So you're going to go T A Luis Robert Jose Abreu. Maybe it's Grandal after that. Jimenez, maybe Mancada or Pollock, one way or the other. 
right? Then it's like, you know, Josh Harrison followed by Andrew Vaughn. That's a darn good lineup. That's so, tough. <laughs> yeah, that's really tough. Uh, ben is asking, when was my last haircut? It was uh, about a week ago, believe it or not. Thank you for your concern. Um, <laughs> Rafa says, Jose Abreu is going to regress this season. Could happen. Could happen. May not. Um, he also says Mankata needs to get better. I mean, I think so too. I mean, that is a very uh, big hot button issue, uh, Yoan Mankata. He had a lot of walks last year, which helped his on base percentage. But uh, if you were, if you're going to bat second and walk, okay, get on base. But if you're batting sixth or seventh, you're not going to be walking, so the guys behind you can drive you in. You got to drive in the run. So uh, he needs to have a better season. Um, I think they just need to uh, have some health, have some breaks. They should win 90-something games, and then we'll see what happens in the playoffs. And I think the White Sox will be aggressive again at the deadline. Hopefully, they'll make the right moves at the deadline as opposed to the wrong ones. <laughs> uh, the Ryan Tapera trade worked. The Craig Kimbrell trade did not work. So, uh, hey, Gustavo Vega. Hello. He says, nice haircut. Everyone's <laughs> focused on my hair. Look at the look at the hair over there with Tim Steppens. Now, that's a haircut right there. I was going to say, I need one. It's getting a little, a little out of hand over here. I was jealous when you said you recently got one. No, it's, uh, you're, you're, you, uh, you're, oh, oh, and Rafa says he just got a, a haircut too. So nice. I'm glad Rafa got a haircut. Uh, <laughs> but anyway, uh, hair looks good, Tim Stebbins. And, uh, we, I appreciate your help, by the way, covering the White Sox while I was in the spring train. You were like my backstop. So much appreciated. Thank you. Yeah. It's been fun. Uh, I, I appreciate that. It's definitely, <sighs> It's 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 uh it's a good team, man. It's 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 interesting for sure. Uh, I'm I'm distracted because look at the the font, the graphic that Danny Wysocki has put in the <laughs> screen. Uh, better <laughs> hair, Chuck or Cap? Well, uh, it's 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 really a debate over hair or no hair. So I don't know if it's a question of um, whether you have hair or not. Well, actually, it is. Uh, if it's better <laughs> hair, I win because I have hair. But does Cap look better without hair than I do with hair? That's the question. Hey, man, uh, we, all, we, all, we all get our different styles. Looks good on everybody respectively, yeah, right? Yeah. yeah, you're just staying in the middle. You're, you know, <laughs> you're, you're Switzerland here. That's you're, what I do. Uh, yeah, yeah. Ben says, leave your hair. Okay, I'm not going to do anything. To, I'm not going to shave it off. So um, I think that's a wrap. Anything else you want to add? Um, how are the, well, let's see. The, it's the Cubs and Brewers. First series. What's yeah. going to happen? Well, tomorrow, uh, opening day is reigning NL Cy Young Award winner Corbin Burns taking the, the mound for Milwaukee uh, against Kyle Hendricks. And Kyle Hendricks' worst season of his career last year. So I think you got, on the one end, a guy coming off his best season, another guy who is looking to kind of get back to form. I think it's a really interesting pitching matchup. And uh, it's going to be cold and I heard rainy. So if you're going to the game, make sure you bundle up. Maybe, maybe bring an umbrella. Well, the White Sox are in Detroit. We shall see what happens. Uh, there is some uh, rain in the forecast in Detroit as well. But uh, we'll be in the studio Friday. It's Ozzie Guillen, Frank Thomas, and me inside. Uh, Saturday and Sunday, Gordon Beckham is going to be joining uh, nice. the show as well. So uh, we've got a lot to go. Um, so a lot to look forward to. Thanks for watching The Rush, everybody. For Tim Stebbins, Danny Wisaki, who is uh, uh, behind the scenes. I'm Chuck Arfine. Uh, play ball. It is. Coming fast and furious. The 2020 baseball season has arrived. Thanks for watching The Rush. We'll see you next time.